We are now below the deadline, the financial and diamond district. Here there are more diamonds by the square foot than any part of the world, including the Transvaal. Good afternoon, Captain. Hello, Peter. Oh, hello, Captain Simon. Hello, Wally. Miss Ravens is expecting me. Captain Simon is here. Thank you. How are you, Mr. Abrams? Oh, good afternoon, Captain. Sit down. Thanks. Have a cigar? Oh, thank you. What's on your mind? Uh, these diamonds. These and a lot more to come. And, uh, oh, pardon me. This is Mr. Everly, Captain Simons. Mr. Everly? I'm glad to know you, Captain. Mr. Everly and I are negotiating a very large consignment of diamonds, and we thought that you should be warned about it. A wise precaution. Are you collecting the consignment here? Yes, they're for my firm in Chicago. But uh, they're not to be shipped for nearly a week. Well, don't worry. We've got a pretty good line on all the boys in town. And not one of them would dare to shove his nose below the deadline. I'll just tell my men to keep their eyes peeled. And if they do see anybody below the deadline that looks suspicious at all, to bring them in for questioning. Oh, by the way, uh, where is your deadline now, Captain? Still Canal Street? Yes. And if any of them come south of that line, it'll be just too bad. Well, so long. Bye-bye. <coughs> well, I know where to get a nice solitaire for you, Molly, as soon as you give Terry Mulvaney the gate. You'll be too old by that time, Captain Simon. Oh, you're never too old. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Right, good day, Captain. Goodbye. Oh, well, Miss Fitzgerald, would you mind working an hour or two later tonight? Certainly not, Mr. Raven. Then as soon as you're through, bring in your notebook. Molly, my darling. Terry, dear, I have to work late tonight, so don't wait for me. I'll have supper downtown. You can meet me near the subway entrance around nine. <laughs> sure, darling, I'll be there with me buttons all shine. Right. Good evening, sister. How about a lift? What's the matter, darling? Oh, just a would-be Casanova. And what's that? Oh, a fellow that thinks that offering a girl a lift is a driver's license. Is that so? I'll take care of him. Oh, don't you worry about a little thing like that. Do you think I'd exchange your homely face for anything in the world? No, wait a minute. What was that crack? It goes for me too, darling. Well, good evening, Miss Tiverton. How are you this evening? Why do people always think it's polite to ask silly questions? Well, well, look who's here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Have you had your supper? Yes, thank you. Hmm. Glass of milk and a sandwich, I suppose, standing up at some lunch counter. Oh, well, this rush will soon be over, and then I'll have my evenings to myself again. Do you like some tea, Terry? Uh huh. I'll go fix up. <laughs> are you still here? I thought it was time for you to be going home instead of coming here visiting. Well, I suppose it is a little late for elderly people, but Molly and me won't mind if you want to go to bed. If you expect me to resent that, you're wrong. Why on earth don't you sit down? You've been on your feet all day, haven't you? I tell you, that's I have. Big poor dogs. Every time I make them walk, they, they get sore. And when are you going to get this advancement you're after? Well, the exams are in June, and by July you'll see me a full-fledged detective. Then crime will automatically cease, I suppose. Oh, no, not immediately. You see, there's the honeymoon first. Terry Mulvaney, if you don't make Molly the happiest wife in the world, you'll have me to answer to. 
It won't be for the want of time. Molly needs a rest. That man Abrams worked her too hard. I don't know what people want with diamonds anyway. Useless things. And yet they can't buy them, they steal them. Oh no, not much chance these days. Rob. Half the crimes in the world are never solved. Well, here, let me hold it for you. Hmm. Well, at last I found a use for a policeman. Oh, I don't know. Molly found one. <laughs> Did you ever try it? Are you two still bickering? <laughs> let me help you. Well. What are you sewing on now, darling, if I'm permitted to ask? Pillow slip, Mr. Mulvaney, for that red head of yours. You'd think you two were married already. When I was a girl, no young lady would have said such a thing. Did you faint too, or was it sworn? I think you'd better confine yourself to questions of more importance. Have you got your book, Terry? Oh, yes, sir. When an officer takes a prisoner into custody, what is his duty? To search the prisoner for weapons and uh, evidence and conduct him directly to the station using every care to prevent his escape. Good. Under what circumstances is a policeman legally justified in using his pistol? Hmm? What's that, correct? Under what circumstances is a policeman legally justified in using his pistol? And let me tell you, Flash, even if she wouldn't give me a tumble, that Fitzgerald Lane can have my role any time she gives me the come on. What she got, the others don't have. Oh, boy. She's got everything. Hold on, Spike. We're not mixing pleasure with business. She didn't fall for you. So now we got to find out some other way when April is going to ship those diamonds. Rocks fascinate you, don't they? <laughs> How do you think I got the name Diamond Dutch? Chasing after fluffs? Maybe not, but I never saw you pass one up. Right. But when there's a job on hand, I don't play with fire. You never saw me get burned. Well, I'm getting penny burned right now. Here we are, all set to make the biggest haul that's ever been pulled. And all you can think about is some dame that you've never even seen. But I'm going to see her. Tomorrow, I think. And we better call the whole deal off. When you fall for a new fluff, I know what happens. So do I. But I can also defer the pleasure to an appropriate time. Don't worry, Dutch. I've seen her play a fish for months before she took the hook. All right. But when does Abrams get in the balance of that consignment? That's all I want to know. Why pull this job a day too soon? When by waiting another day, we could get maybe a hundred grand more. What'll you bet I can find out by tomorrow night? Come on, I'll split a grand with you. Five hundred apiece. Okay, that's a bet. You can land that Fitzgerald name. You've got it coming. Mr. Ackroyd? Right, young lady. And you are Miss... Uh... Just Mr. Abrams' secretary. Can you wait a moment, please? With pleasure. I come to look for a diamond, and behold, I find a pearl. Uh, careful. So many synthetic pearls on the market these days. Ah, uh, but then I'm an excellent judge. Professional, I would think. On the contrary. Amateur in its literal sense. Mr. Abrams, Mr. Ackroyd's to you. Can you go in, please? Sorry I'm so late. I suppose it's about your closing time. Oh, there's another closing time when we have a client. Won't you sit down? You said over the phone you were looking for stone of about uh, five carats. Yes. A yarder. Send in the stones I selected for Mr. Ackroyd. Oh, that looks like a very fine stone you have in your ring. May I see it? Yes. I picked that up in uh, Hatton Garden. Ah, you know diamonds. <laughs> it's 
Perfect. Can you match it? Well, you can judge for yourself. May I use your glass? Certainly. Aren't you going home, Molly? Doesn't look like it, does it? Well, I had a date, too. Woman proposes, but business disposes. <laughs> well, I'll be glad to get home and dispose of that corned beef and cabbage that's waiting for me. Well, these are the best. But neither is as good as mine. I'm afraid you're right. But I shall have more in Thursday. And I think finer ones. Could you call then? I'm not sure, but uh, I think I could make it Friday. Well, I'm very sorry, but they'll be gone then. Hmm. Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a thousand for that one. Miss Fitzgerald, make out a receipt for Mr. Ackroyd for $1,000. So that's that. Here's your receipt, Mr. Ackroyd. Thank you. I'm sorry to have been the cause of keeping you so late, but uh, perhaps I can drive you home. Well, I am rather late. Then why don't you let Mr. Ackroyd take you home? All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah, not so bad. Wouldn't you take me on approval for a while? Someone else? There's the proof. Hello, Terry. This is Mr. Ackroyd, Officer Mulvaney. Glad to know you indeed. And so you're the reason she was so anxious to get home. Meaning what? Well, you see, Mr. Abrams and I kept her a little late, and uh, I offered to make amends. Oh, so you're a friend of Mr. Abrams, well, that's different. Well, I'm afraid I don't follow. Uh, Terry thought you were another smart aleck, like the one that tried to pick me up the other night. Well, I uh, might be sorely tempted, but uh, I don't think I'd try. I uh, seem to be a better judge of character than you are. Well, uh, good night, Mr. Mulvaney. Good night, Mr. Sherrill. Thanks again, Mr. Ackerman. Don't mention it. matter? You don't seem to like the gentleman. I do not. Oh, Terry, you need never be jealous of me. As a matter of fact, I only accepted his offer so that I wouldn't keep you waiting. Well, who is he? All I know is that he just bought a diamond for a thousand dollars. I thought he was another one of those mashes, like the one last night. Uh -uh. I'm not that foolish. <laughs> You're in love with me, ain't you? Uh-huh. Hmm. Yes, Pike? You're right. She had to be seen to be appreciated. Yeah, I thought she'd appeal to your sense of proportion. Yeah. Now I have another object in life. And now a stenog interferes with a hundred grand, huh? You'd better dig for 500, Dutch. You too, Spike. Did you find out? I not only got a good look at the office, but I found out that the consignment will be complete on Thursday night. To top it off, I drove the young lady home. That wins the bet, I think, Dutch. <laughs> You're a wonder, Flash. Yeah. Well, it cost me a grand to do it. I bought that one. Only worth 800. Well, I'll get most of it back. Take a look at the girl's writing, Spike. Could you imitate it? 
so she couldn't tell the difference herself. What's on your mind? She seems to prefer an Irish harness bull to me. And what, he says. Oh, so you're a friend of Mr. Abrams. Well, that's different. Ligure, I'd like to push the ugly mug of him down his own throat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, forget it. We got to think about this job ahead of us. That's just what I'm doing, Dutch. When you're pulling a big job, it's always safer to have some goat to take the rap. Sure. It satisfies the public and gives the cops a chance to save their faces. Right. And this is where I kill two birds with one stone. Officer Mulvaney will be the goat. And Miss Fitzgerald will be... In uh, circulation again. But how are you going to do all this? Easy. Just practice on her handwriting, Spike. And we'll send Terry a billy-doo on Thursday. <laughs> 